Now, the Liberal Democrats had a pretty disastrous election in December. They went into the campaign with 21 MPs and emerged with just 11. Even their leader, Jo Swinson, lost her seat. So that means there'll be a leadership election in the summer. And one of the people tipped to run is the party's education spokesperson, Leila Moran. She's here now in the studio. Thanks very much for being with us. Um, before we talk about uh, the Lib Dems, uh, I'm just keen to get your thoughts on coronavirus. Um, what do you make about the way the UK government has been responding? Well, first of all, I mean, we have to recognise everyone's really worried um, and not so much for me, for example. I'm young and healthy and I'll be fine, but I worry for my grandparents. I worry for those who are most vulnerable. In the last few days, we've been working together actually with the government to raise the issues that people are contacting us about. So in particular, statutory sick pay. Mm -hmm. If you're uh, on zero hours contract in the gig economy, you have to make sure that you don't have to make a choice between self-isolating and eating. Um, I'm also really worried for the homeless. Now, how can you self-isolate if you don't have a home? And the sector's telling me that they haven't had enough support from the government. Okay. They were a bit slow off the mark, but I'm glad to see they're responding now. OK, thank you. Um, now, there's, of course, a small matter of the Lib Dem leadership uh, contest. Uh, you've had uh, your name tipped by others to, to run. Are you going to put your hat in the ring? Yes, I will be standing for the leadership of the Liberal Democrats. Okay. Um, I believe it's time that we move on as a party and offer a positive vision for the country and I'm the right person to lead that change. So what's the pitch then? So I've been up and down the country listening to voters about what went wrong in the election, partly, but also asking them questions about what they think of us. I think it's really important that we listen and understand where we've been going wrong. What do they think of you? Well, you it, you there, perhaps? it's really interesting. So they come back and say in the election, revoke was a big mistake because it felt very top down. And actually, cooperation is a key part of what we believe as Liberal Democrats. And we need to earn their trust again. Uh, the other thing that worried them was that we were saying that we were going to be the party of the next government when, in fact, that wasn't the case and we lost their trust again over that. So then I asked them, well, what do you think we stand for? And that's the bit that's really worrying because they then say, well, nine times out of ten, we don't know. And the key question we have to answer now is what are we for? That's the question that is missing from the eyes of the voters. So I then asked, well, what would turn you? What would bring you to us? And they're really clear, actually, it's quite interesting, up and down the country, in Leaves areas, Remain areas, rural, urban. It's about equality of opportunity. In particular, they mention education, which, of course, was the reason I went into politics. They mention the climate crisis and the fact that all political parties need to urgently tackle that. And they also want a less tribal politics, a kinder, gentler politics, where we are working together as politicians on the things that matter to them and aren't so focused on us. OK. Um, I just want to unpick a couple of things that you were uh, saying there about the reasons that people turned away from you at the last election, because, actually, you know, I'm sure you'll admit it was a pretty uh, disappointing result, shall we Absolutely. say, for the Lib Dems. Um, you were saying then that... You were saying that the Lib Dems could be a party of part of government was a mistake. Um, but then during the campaign, I interviewed you uh, in the studio and asked if you thought Jo Swinson could be Prime Minister, and, and you said this, yep. um, I think that she could, I do. At other elections, I would have held back from that, but given the volatility of politics right now, it's entirely possible. I mean, do you... Th do you so the timing of that was in November. Mm -hmm. And at that time, we were in an unprecedented situation where you had a four-way split among the parties, and we were, you know, vying for space with both the Brexit Party and the Tories. The thing that changed, and that this was the moment, and people are very clear about this, this was the moment where we lost the credibility. When the Brexit Party stood down in favour of the Conservatives, and it became very clear that in the first-past-the-post system that couldn't happen, we continued to say that. But even in and November, we should have saying been... that Joe Swinson was going to be Prime Minister or could be Prime Minister is a bit of a stretch. Well, I, I think I said that on this programme and I said very much that it was a stretch target, but it was possible at that time. And I think it was absolutely right to be ambitious for the party and I continue to be ambitious for the party. But one of the big things that is very clear is under the first-past-the-post system, for the third party to then pull through, that's very difficult. And electoral reform is one of the things that I think we need to keep pushing. I'm very heartened by the fact that Labour Party uh, leadership candidates have been starting to talk about this. I do hope that this might be the moment that we achieve electoral reform in this country. Um, the other uh, criticism you made of the campaign uh, was the strategy of revoke, this idea that uh, if the Lib Dems were in government, they would cancel Article 50 and, and cancel Brexit altogether. Um, did you speak up against the policy? Did you vote against it in Lib Dem conference then? I did not, no. And actually... Interestingly, I've been reflecting on how we make decisions in the party. In the rooms, 
where these decisions were being discussed. And I do not absolve my self-responsibility at all from this. But there weren't enough dissenting voices. And it became very clear that we were, you know, surrounded by Remain seats, people who had campaigned ardently for that Remain position. And to move away from the people's vote, which I think would have worked in many parts of the country, was partly led by a lack of diversity of voices in that room. So you should have perhaps spoken up more. You should have been one of those dissenting voices yourself. At the time, I was focused on my seat, um, a very marginal seat. I don't anymore. I've increased my majority massively. And it would have worked for me. But what was really clear is that, you know, voices from the southwest, former heartlands, voices from Yorkshire, voices from elsewhere in the country weren't in that room. And I do think we need to look very deeply at how we make big strategic decisions in the party. And as leader, I do think that that is something that would have to change. Mm -hmm. um, some people as well, uh, when, you, when you're talking about not knowing what the Lib Dems are for, um, some people still feel that going into coalition with the Conservatives was a mistake. I'm interested to know your view on that. It, should the Lib Dems be owning uh, the achievements that they made in coalition or is that a time that they should be distancing themselves from? So when I discuss this with people, it does come up and it's disappointing that it comes up because it feels like it was a long time ago. But I think it's what coalition did was it eroded trust in the party. But I don't just look at coalition as the problem. I actually also look at the last five years and the fact that since then, since we haven't been in government, we haven't been able to positively put forward what we are for you know talking about public services education the nhs these are the things that people want us to talk about if the um, coalition is something that still comes up would it be a mistake for the party to elect a leader who was perhaps a minister in the coalition it'll be up to the party to decide who they are going to elect but my pitch what's, is very much about what's moving your personal view? on i it will be up to the party to decide but what's very clear for voters is it still does come up and if we can present a party that has moved on, that's moved on afresh, has the vision, has the policies that speak to people for them and their families, then I do think that that will win us success again. Talking about moving on, um, should the Lib, Lib Dems be the party of rejoining the EU? So my position on this is that I will never stop fighting for those internationalist values. Cooperation is a big part, not just nationally, but internationally. And I think one of the things I regret is whilst people knew we were against Brexit, we never explained why. And it's because we want to work with others. But we also have to accept where we are. I think the biggest worry I have right now is in June, we have a flashpoint, which is the government has said they will walk away if they don't get a deal. That's no deal. That's no one wants no deal, except possibly some very uh, ardent anti-Europeans in the Conservative Party. This is not the right thing for the country. That's what we need to focus on now. And if there is a way to leave that door open so that one day, with public consent, we go back, I would be first in line. Uh very quickly, because we haven't got much time, um, if you do become leader of the Liberal Democrats, which of the three contenders for the Labour leadership would you most fear? Well, actually, I think there's an opportunity now to be working with other parties, not just Labour, but OK, who would you most Greens. like to work with, then? I'll phrase it. Well, it's, it's not up to me. It's not up to me. I, I honestly think that we could work with all of them, and on particularly electoral reform. I'm so pleased that okay. all of them have said that there is something they could work with us on that. OK, Leila Moran, thank you very much for uh, announcing uh, your bid to be the next Lib Dem leader on the show. Much appreciated. Thank you.